This is clip three of my discussion of the exchange rates. So in this clip, I want to cover the supply and demand curves in those pictures <clears throat> that you looked at in clip one, that uh, figure 37.1. Now, basically what's going on here is that um, we are only looking at the current account and capital account. So in this analysis, at the time being, we are sort of pretending that there, is, that there is no Bank of Canada. There's no official financing going on. That's the first assumption. Okay, that, that's how, under that assumption, excuse me, that's how we draw the supply curve and the demand curve. Then in t figure 37.2, we introduce the Bank of Canada, the official financing function. Okay. So just to recall very um, briefly, the current account based on the classification system that I gave you consisted of two major sub-accounts in the current account. There was the trade balance, which was exports minus imports basically, of goods and services, and that capital service account, right? So that's like earning a, a dividends from foreigners or stuff like that. Okay, so it's like if I own stock in Britain and they pay dividends out, that that's a, cap, you know, that's a capital service um, uh, income for a receipt for Canada on the balance of payments. And again, according to the classification system that I gave you, the capital account, again, refers to both long and short-term capital. Short-term capital involves, again, international, this is all international stuff, remember, uh, pertaining to like buying and selling of treasury bills, so like a Canadian buying a treasury bill in the United States or something like that. And long-term capital gets into portfolio investment, so buying shares and um, corporate and government bonds from other countries. So examples of this would be like if a Canadian buys uh, German government bonds or a Canadian buys American stock. And also that other one, f uh, another sort of type of long-term investment would be to like go physically, you know, buy a, a factory in another country kind of thing. That's the direct in, of, in the direct investment, right? Okay, so that's all we're really looking at at this point is capital account and current account. Okay, and then we'll add in the Bank of Canada later, the, the official financing function. The trick to grasping this whole supply and demand thing is to remember a couple of things. When you say foreign exchange in this example, that phrase, foreign exchange, we mean yens, okay? I mean, in the back of your head, you can think, um, you know, demand for jelly beans or demand for Snickers chocolate bars. It's the same thing. It's just another, yens are just another asset, just another thing to buy. That's all they are. They're just like any other consumer good that you've ever bought in your life. Just like buying textbooks or buying, you know, gasoline for your car. Demand for gas, demand for textbooks, demand for yen, demand for foreign exchange. Okay? So that's all it is. It's just a thing that we want, possibly, or we want to get rid of. And that's really all this comes down to, is, you, is demand and supply. Do you want it or not? So that's all you have to think of it as. And, and, and the important, the second thing to keep in mind is this idea that when people um, demand foreign exchange, okay, this would normally be the Canadians in this two country world, they demand foreign exchange, they demand yens. That also implicitly means they're supplying dollars, right? This is because Canadians have dollars. It's like in my wallet, I have dollars. Okay, everything's in dollars, right? If I'm now demanding foreign exchange, demanding yens, I have to effectively supply 
supply my Canadian dollars to this foreign exchange market so I can somehow get my yens. And similarly, if a Canadian goes to a foreign exchange market and says, I'm going to supply, uh, uh, and says, I want dollars, okay, I, I'm demanding dollars. They have to supply yens. Maybe the better example of this would be the Japanese. From the Japanese perspective, they would be the ones going more likely to the foreign exchange market because they have more yens. So they're going to supply yens, supply the foreign exchange, and then demand the Canadian dollars. Right. The reason for this is because Canadian dollars only circulate in Canada. They don't circulate in Japan. And the same thing goes here. Right? If you go shopping in the grocery store, you can't pay for your groceries in Japanese yen. They're not going to take it because Canadian dollars sort of live in Canada. And Japanese yen live in Japan kind of thing. Um, so ultimately, what, they're, what the, this idea, what they're trying to get here is that when people go to the foreign exchange market, they're, they're, they're looking for a trade. Okay, so I, I'm trying to trade the currency that I currently have in my hands for a different one. And then, and then hopefully the idea is that someone else will take what I'm supplying and then supply what I'm demanding and so that the market's clear. Right, so I'm, if I'm a Canadian going to the market, I go with my Canadian dollars. The, okay, and I'm, I'm demanding, I want yen. And we're going to talk about why I might want some yen in a second. The Japanese guy is going to the market with his mountain of yens and saying, so they're supplying the yens and demanding dollars. So this market, the idea here is so that when I'm supplying the, these dollars, there's, there's an equal amount of demand for dollars, that someone in Japan is wanting the dollars. And then the same thing, uh, uh, you know, I want the yen, so he's supplying what I need kind of thing. It kind of brings it all together. And that's the gist of, a, of, of the idea here, is that, you know, uh, it sort of is to match all of this up. Okay, so just so so in summary, I'm gonna to have to make another video, unfortunately, because I took a little bit too long on this. But the point is, is you have to remember that we're drawing these supply and demand curves, and at the current point with figure 37.1, it's just the current account and capital account. We're ignoring the Bank of Canada. We're saying there's no official financing. So in other words, the Bank of what that means is the Bank of Canada is not um, adding to or selling off of its reserves of foreign exchange, right? So in other words, the central bank, the Bank of Canada, would have a, a pile of yens sitting in a, in a reserve. And so it's not changing that. They're, they're not buying more yen, and you know, adding to the reserves, and they're not selling off yen. That's what we'll, I'll show momentarily. And the second thing is, is that when I go and supply Canadian dollars to the foreign exchange market, it's also basically like saying, I'm demanding yen. And if a Japanese person goes to the foreign exchange market, supplies their yens, it's like saying they're demanding dollars. They're trying to convert you know, their yens into dollars. And I'm trying to convert my dollars into uh, yens. So next clip, I want to talk about, again, just to clarify, uh, the, the shape of the supply curve, shape of the demand curve, and, and then why there is this supply uh, and demand for foreign exchange. Like what would cause this to happen?